come this morning and begin to give God the glory, celebrate Him and give Him praise for the privilege that we have to be in His presence. This morning, will you give Him thanks from the depth of your heart, celebrate the faithfulness of our God. It's worthy to be praised and to be glorified. Jesus, we have come to thank you. We have come to praise you. We have come to glorify your holy name. You are worthy to be praised, worthy to be glorified. We honor you, Jesus. We celebrate you. Are you giving God thanks this morning? Let it ring from your heart unto him this morning. We give you praise. We celebrate your faithfulness. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy to be honored. We thank you, mighty God. Now begin to ask him to speak to you this morning by his word. Lord, we are here for an encounter with you and with your word this morning. By your word, let every one of us experience a change of level. We give you thanks. We give you praise. And we give you all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning we come before you with gratitude in our hearts because you are good. You are worthy of all of our praise. Thank you for your mighty hand in our midst today. We come before you and before your word, we are asking that you speak directly to each one of us. Let every heart be open today. And let your word bring about a change of level today. Amen. You have called it our covenant day of restoration. Restore everyone today. Amen. We give you the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Amen. Give Jesus a big, big hand this morning. And please, you may be seated in his presence. My case is different. Because I'm redeemed of the Lord as a covenant child. What affects others? It's not permitted to affect me. Congratulations. We are continuing in our series of teachings, which we began last week, Sunday, entitled Empowered by the Spirit to Fulfill My Glorious Destiny. Empowered by the Spirit to Fulfill My Glorious Destiny. We're reminded that this month, the theme is Empowered by the Spirit to Fulfill Destiny. Now we've come to understand from scriptures in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the Bible tells us between verse 4 and verse 8, it said there are diversities of gifts, but it's the same spirit. There are differences in administration, but it's the same Lord. He said there are diversities of operation, but it is the same God that worketh all in all. So clearly we see from scriptures that the Bible identifies that although there are many and diverse operations, administrations, and different gifts, the Bible makes us to understand that all of these are operated by the same Spirit. That is why Ephesians chapter 4 tells us very clearly there is one Spirit. There is one Spirit, but He has diverse manifestations, diverse operations, and diverse administrations. And we understand, the Bible tells us, that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit without. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 7. In other words, the manifestations in their diverse operations of the Holy Ghost are there for our profiting. Therefore, it means that without the manifestation of the Spirit in the life of the believer, he or she will lack profiting. Our profiting is tied to the manifestation of the Spirit. That is why the Bible makes us understand, it said in Romans chapter 8 and verse 19 to 21, it said that the endless expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. The all of creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him that subjected the same in hope. He said, because the creature, he said, shall be delivered from the corruption of 
from the corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. But those who will manifest are called the sons of God. And who are the sons of God? Those that operate according to the manifestation of the Spirit. It says in Romans 8.14, it said, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, those who are under the influence of the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So clearly, for our profiting to be visible, the manifestation of the Spirit of God is of absolute necessity. That is why I believe that for each one of us in this great month, as the Spirit of God becomes the influence upon our life in greater dimension, we shall be entering into greater levels of, man, of, of manifestation in the name of Jesus Christ. That means greater order of results for you. Somebody believe me, say loud, amen. amen. The Bible is very clear in telling us in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 31, it said, convert earnestly the best gift, the best operation, the, the best administration, the best manifestation of the Spirit. And the best one is whichever one you need. And that is why you and I must passionately press in this month. It takes a desperation to position yourself for the manifestation of the Spirit of God. And I pray that for each one of us in this great month, we shall begin to experience in greater dimension the manifestations of the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus Christ. So we are going to be looking at some of these diverse operations of the Holy Ghost as available to us as believers and each one of us shall be walking into greater dimensions of them in the name of Jesus Christ. Number one, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of revelation. Is the spirit of what? The spirit of revelation. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 1 verse 17 and 18, it said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. What does it do? The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints that you may know. So very clearly, there is an operation of the Holy Ghost referred to as the spirit of revelation. And his duty is to open the eyes, to cause you to see the hidden things that God has packaged for you. I'd like us to recognize that redemption is loaded for your profiting. But what the enemy specializes in is to blindfold the eyes of men. In 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4, the Bible said, Whom the God of this world has blinded that they may not know. So the God of this world, who is the devil himself, specializes in trying to keep the saints ignorant. Because the ignorance of the saints is the strength of the enemy. The devil has no strength in himself. His strength is in our ignorance. And what the enemy seeks to do is to keep the eyes of the saints blind. But the assignment of the Holy Ghost is to descend as the spirit of revelation for the opening of the eyes. This morning I see the spirit of God as the spirit of revelation opening our eyes in the name of Jesus. He opens our eyes to see things that we cannot naturally see. In the book of 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9 and 10, he said, Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, it has not entered into the heart of man. The things that God has prepared, they are hidden. He said, but, <laughs> if it's 10, God has revealed them. How? By his spirit, the spirit of revelation. He said, for the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. So the Holy Spirit is the one that opens us to the depths of God. He shows us the things hidden in God. And the Bible goes on to tell us in verse 12 down to verse 14 of this same scripture, 1 Corinthians 2. It said, now we have not received the spirit of this world. It said, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given. There are many things that are freely available, but they are hidden. And it is the spirit of God that opens our eyes to know the things that are freely given unto us. And verse 14 tells us in that scripture, it tells us, he said, the natural man cannot receive them. He said, the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So it is the operation of the Holy Ghost that opens our eyes to make us see the reality of the provisions of redemption in order to walk in them. They are freely available but they are genuinely hidden. It therefore takes the opening of our eyes to see what is hidden for you and I. And that is the operation of the spirit 
of revelation. That is why the Bible says in the book of John chapter 16, verse 12 to 13, look at what Jesus said very clearly. He said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot handle them yet. But when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. How many truths? All truth. He said, he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. All truth means all truth. It means truth concerning every department of life. Financial truth, family truth, business truth, career truth, marital truth, all truths. It will lead you into all truth. But Jesus said, I have many things to say. If I say it now, it will not benefit you because you cannot understand it. So it is not in just hearing. It is not in just reading. It is in the Holy Ghost showing. And that is the operation of the spirit of revelation. Hear this and hear very well, people of God. It doesn't matter how much you read and how much you hear. If the Holy Ghost does not show, you will not see. It is the Holy Ghost that opens our eyes and causes us to see. I pray again for each one of us in this great month. May our eyes be open. I said, may our eyes be open. And what is the value of revelation? The Bible tells us very clearly in the book of Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 and 15. It said, look north, look south, look east, look west. For as far as your eyes can see, it shall be given unto you. As far. So it is all a matter of how much you see that determines how much you receive. God has prepared all things for us, but we are only permitted to receive those things that we see. So it is how far we see that determines how much we receive. The provision of God notwithstanding, it is available by God's provision, but it is obtainable by man's revelation. That is why we must position ourselves in the pursuit of the spirit of revelation to open our eyes to see. Will you lift your right hand to heaven and say, Lord, open my eyes. One more time, say louder, Lord, open my eyes. In Isaiah chapter 60, we see again the value of revelation. Beginning from verse 1 down to verse 3, he said, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For darkness will cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But for those that have this light, he said, The Lord will arise upon them, and his glory shall be seen on them. By reason of this, he said, the Gentiles will come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Let's go further. He said in verse 4, he said, and lift up your eyes, look round about and see. All of them are gathering themselves together. They are coming unto thee. Thy sons will come from far. Thy daughter shall be nurse at thy side. In verse 5, he said, you shall see and you will flow together. Your heart will fear and be enlarged. Why? Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee and the forces of the Gentiles will come unto to thee. What is the cause of all of these things? Arise, shine, because light has come. You are only as relevant as your light. The light that you carry is what determines the relevance you possess. Is that because of that light, Gentiles will come to you and kings will come to the brightness of your rising. That's the power of light. You see, those who lack light seek for help of men. But those who have light are sought for by men. If you want to keep seeking for men's help, lack light. If you want men to keep seeking your help, have light. Possessing light is the key to relevance. Wherever darkness reigns, whoever has light rules. And that is what the Bible tells us. It said the darkness will cover the earth. And gross darkness, the people, it is happening in our very day and age. There is mass confusion everywhere. People are being confused on every side. Before they recover from one thing, another devastation, another kind of calamity. So anyone that has light becomes the, side, the person of attraction. And that is what revelation means to you and me. Everyone that possesses light becomes the center of attraction. I pray for each one of us again that by the operation of the spirit of revelation, your eyes shall be opened to light in the name of Jesus. Yeah. 
Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. And this can become so, so, so powerful that the Bible tells in verse 22 of that scripture, it said there in Isaiah 60 verse 22, a little one shall become a thousand, a small one shall become a strong nation, and I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. That is, I will make it quick. You gain speed by light. I see somebody here gaining speed by the light of God in the name of Jesus. That is why we must desire desperately the spirit of revelation. We must desire desperately the spirit of revelation because it brings about profiting in every department of life. I see that becoming our experience in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, we discover that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of obedience. Is the spirit of what? Is the spirit of what? It's the spirit of obedience. In Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 27, it said, I will put my spirit within you and I will cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. I will put my spirit within you and you will, I will cause you to walk in my statutes and because of my spirit, you will keep my judgments and do them. So clearly we see that the Bible shows us that in order to be able to obey the instructions of God, we require the assistance of the Spirit of God. The Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 13, it is God that walketh in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So it takes the empowerment of the Spirit to keep in line with the commandments of God. And please hear this and hear it very well. What you know is not valuable if you can't do it. The Bible says in James chapter 1 verse 22 down to verse 25. It says, be, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. It says, for he that hears the word and does not do it, is like a man beholding his natural face in the glass and forgets what manner of man he is. But he that looks unto the perfect law of liberty, him not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, that same man is blessed in his deed. So the blessing is in doing. Blessings naturally follow obedience. Where obedience is lacking, blessings are absent. And we see that clearly in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. It said, it shall come to pass if, say me if. That means everything you will say next is a condition. If thou will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do, not just hearken to know, but to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. If you do that, the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations. And then verse 2, all these blessings will come upon thee. So the blessing follows obedience. It doesn't matter what we know if we don't do it. And it is the Holy Ghost that empowers us to do. All of these blessings will come upon thee and overtake thee. And he repeated it there again in that verse, if only you will hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Hearken why? Hearken to do. So it is our obedience that makes the difference in our race, our obedience. And it is the Holy Ghost that empowers our obedience. It is the Holy Spirit that empowers our obedience. He empowers us to walk in obedience. How do we know this? Romans chapter 7, the Bible tells us in verse 8. Romans 7 and verse 8. Verse 18, sorry. Romans 7 and verse 18. It tells us there very clearly. It says, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwell no good thing. It says, for to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. There are many of us with full notes but zero action because we desire to do it but there is no capacity to do it. But look at what the Bible says in, verse, in chapter 8 and verse 1 and 2. There is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. He said, who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the thing that is making me not obey God. So it takes the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to obey God. That's why we must keep craving for the spirit of obedience. The spirit 
of obedience. It's the one that empowers our obedience. Whenever you are given instructions by God, you have revelation from his word that needs to be obeyed. It takes the empowerment of the spirit of obedience to actually obey. Because one of the specialties of the enemy is to begin to weaken you at the time of obedience. When it is time to obey, once he has not succeeded in blinding your eyes from sin, the next target is to weaken you at the time of obedience. That's why you discover when it's time to pray, suddenly you find yourself feeling tired. This is you who was agile when you were doing everything that is not spiritual. You are cooking, there's energy. You are doing other things, there's energy. But once it is time to pray, you find that he begins to weaken you. Why? It is the time for obedience. And because it is time for obedience, he seeks to weaken your, 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 your capacity to obey. But what does the Holy Ghost do? He quickens your capacity to obey. When it comes upon you, it begins to empower you to do that which God has commanded you to do. I pray for each one of us again this morning that the spirit of obedience comes afresh upon us. Somebody believe it, say it louder, amen. amen. The spirit of obedience comes afresh upon each one of us amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it empowers our capacity to obey. And whenever you find a man that is obeying God, the blessing of God begins to decorate him. He said, blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandment. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. He said, and his righteousness endured forever. Why? This man fears God. This man delights in the commandment of God. I see that grace for delightsome obedience, excited obedience, coming upon each one of us again in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. I said somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. Number three, we discover that the Holy Spirit is the Lord of the harvest. The Holy Spirit is the Lord of the harvest. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 38, we find Jesus speaking about the Lord of the harvest. He said, pray ye the Lord of the harvest, that he will send laborers into his field. The Holy Spirit is the Lord of the harvest. And we see this demonstrated clearly in the book of Acts of the Apostles. In Acts chapter 2, after the Holy Ghost came down, suddenly we saw manifestation of massive harvest. Verse 37 down to verse 41, 3,000 were saved. Chapter 4, verse 4, 5,000 were saved. Chapter 5, verse 14, multitudes were added. Chapter 6 and verse 7, the church multiplied. Chapter 13, verse 44, suddenly almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. All of these manifestations of the move of the Spirit of the Lord, who is the Lord of the harvest. Remember, it is God's heart desire that the entire earth be covered with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. And it is the Holy Spirit that empowers this as a reality. He, he brings about the harvest. That is why every time there is a move of the Spirit, there is a supernatural release of harvest. He is the one who is the Lord of the harvest himself is in charge of the harvest. And that is why when the Holy Ghost empowers a man, you see the individual supernaturally begin to manifest on the harvest field with unusual results. In Acts chapter 4, the Bible, chapter, chapter 4, the Bible tells us, it said when the church was, was, was threatened, verse 29 down to verse 33, suddenly they went and they prayed together. It said, behold their threatenings and grant that thy servants with boldness will speak thy word. And after they had prayed, the place where they were gathered was shaken. He said, and they were all filled with the Spirit. And what was the effect? With great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of Christ. And great grace was upon them all. There is no one who has the empowerment of the Spirit that will lack grace for the harvest. He said, great grace was upon them all. No one was exempted because each one was empowered. The moment the empowerment of the Spirit of God as the Lord of the harvest comes upon the life of an individual, you never lack result on the harvest field again. You find yourself supernaturally getting results. One of us was sharing testimony at the home cell 
And she said, they went down to the harvest field and everybody, nobody was paying attention. He said, and they went and prayed, Lord, give us souls. There is something spiritual that is required to take dominion. And suddenly within a short space of time, 18 people surrendered to Christ. Where nobody would pay attention, suddenly each one began to fall like ripe fruits. Why? The Holy Ghost had come to empower. I pray for each one of us that from this season onward, the Holy Spirit, who is the Lord of the harvest, will empower each one of us for supernatural harvest. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. I said, somebody believe it, say louder, amen. Somebody believe it, say the loudest, amen. amen. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. He empowers us for supernatural harvest. We begin to see the entire harvest field wrecked by his operation. Why? Because he's the one who convicts men of sin. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 16, verse 7 and verse 8, when the spirit of truth comes, it will convict men. It will convict them of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. He's the one who arrests the hearts of men. We are speaking, but he's the one convicting. We are speaking, but he's the one converting. I pray again for each one of us that the Holy Ghost, as the Lord of the harvest, will empower each one afresh. Amen. Somebody believe me, say louder, amen. amen. So he is the Lord of the harvest. And we see clearly that when we begin to turn many to righteousness, the Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3, it said, those that be wise, they will shine as the firmament, and those that turn many to righteousness as the stars of heaven forever and ever will become everlasting stars by reason of turning many to righteousness. That is why we need this empowerment. We need this empowerment. I pray for each one of us again today that via the empowerment of the Holy Ghost, we shall become instruments that will provoke unusual harvest. Amen. Somebody believe me, say louder, amen. amen. I said, somebody believe me, say louder, amen. amen. Somebody believe me, say the loudest, amen. amen. That's what the Holy Ghost does. He empowers us for supernatural results. One time I was going on an assignment to a certain place and I was reading in a book and I saw a testimony concerning Smith Wigglesworth. How he was on a journey and he began to pray and people began to come to him to confess their sins and surrender to Christ. As I was reading it, my heart was torn ablaze. And I began to pray as I was going. I was going and incidentally the place I was going was the same city where he used to live. So I began to pray, Lord, I want this kind of experience where people come to me and surrender their lives to Christ. And as soon as I stepped out of the train in that location, a woman ran to me, Caucasian woman, ran to me. He said, I want, I want church, I want church, I want church, I want church, I'm looking for church. I said, no problem, come. I led her and then passed her on to the pastor. And right there, I saw the experience of the power of the Holy Spirit. The pastor looked at me and said, uh, how did she come to meet you? I said, you will not understand because I discovered that there was a magnet that the Holy Ghost has, that when it comes upon the life of a man, it begins to pull people from every direction. I pray for each one of us today that that same magnet of the Holy Ghost will come afresh upon you. God, servant, our Father, went somewhere one day and was ministering. And I, we didn't know where, somewhere a bit further, ministering down there, speaking to people about Jesus. And suddenly, I saw people climbing on Okadas and running in that direction. So we're wondering what's happening. Why is everybody running that way? And then we began to hear some, ah, Papa is there, Papa is there, Papa is there. And people were running in that direction. And I discovered that there is something that a person can carry by the Holy Ghost, that you will land in an environment you know the magnets vary in power. There are magnets that when you put it in a place, any metal within 10 meters will be drawn. There are others, 100 meters, they'll be drawn. Others, 1,000 meters, they'll be drawn. The more empowerment you have, the more magnetic you become. I pray for each one of us this morning that via the empowerment of the Lord of the harvest, I see souls being drawn to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the Lord of the harvest. Number four, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of meekness. Is the spirit of meekness. In 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 4, the Bible tells us, he said, but 
in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of a great price. The spirit of meekness. Meekness is the kingdom pathway to greatness. Moses was very meek and Moses became very great. Numbers chapter 12 verse 3 and Exodus 11 and verse 3. The man Moses was the meekest of the men, but the man Moses became the greatest of men. He attained greatness on the pathway of meekness. Remember Matthew chapter 5 verse 5, the Bible tells us, it said, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. They will be in charge on the earth. So we see clearly that meekness is the pathway to being in charge on the earth. Why? Because everyone that is in the state of meekness secures divine assistance. For God resists the proud, but he gives more grace or more help to the humble. The humble are the help of God. The proud are resisted by God. And the question is, if God becomes your resistance, who can assist you? But when God becomes your assistance, who can resist you? For if God be for us, who can be against us? But it takes the spirit of meekness to maintain a state of meekness before God. Please hear this. It has been said before by God's servant, our Father, success is a monster. There are many people that any little success they have, it, it just destabilizes them. Any little success, it just destabilizes them. He has gotten a little money now. He said, no, you see, I can't be doing sanctuary keeper again. I can't mean I have, I have people cleaning my house. I can't be doing sanctuary keeper. It's not, it's not for a person of my level. Just, just because a little money has arrived. So in order to be maintained as humble, God did, he, he deletes the money because he knows that where there is no money he is compulsorily humble. You see, one of the enemies of many people's lifting is absence of humility. And because God does not want to scatter you, he loves you too much. So he maintains you by making sure, because there are some individuals that any little taste of excess success, excess success, any little taste of it, it will destabilize them totally. You just find the man, just wake up with a strange idea. I say, you see now, I want, a, I want another wife. <laughs> He's a church man, but he lacks humility. He lacks humility. He lacks, David says something. He said, I will remain base in my own sight. I will remain base in my own sight. We must recognize that it takes the Holy Ghost to come upon the life of a man to keep yourself small when others call you big. It takes the Holy Ghost to tame your heart and keep yourself small in your eyes when others are calling you big. Because you see, the truth is this. What men call you does not disqualify you before God. It's what you call yourself. When you say, now you see, uh, as a person at my level, there are some things I cannot be doing again. I can't be struggling. I can't see you now pushing people, people pushing me, and I can't, I can't do that. roaming around on the street as a person my level you see when you begin to look do things like that then you are disqualifying yourself before God we had the testimony of one of us he said he, will, he came he called ex courtis now ex courtis then a courtis and he met God's servant somewhere he said what is a rich man like this doing in an area like this what is he doing in a place like this and he stood there captivated by that fact because the Holy Ghost has assisted for him to remain small in his own eyes, even though men see him as big in their own eyes. You see, the smaller you stay in your eyes, the bigger you will be before men. Those who stoop before God, God lifts them before men. 
I pray today that the Holy Ghost as the spirit of meekness will come afresh upon your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, today is our covenant day of restoration. Therefore, we are going to look at some of the keys to supernatural restoration. Keys to supernatural restoration. I'd like us to first of all realize that until you discover what is lost, you cannot begin the journey towards restoration. We must know that which we have a right to in redemption to discover that which we have been robbed of in our journey. You cannot declare robbery when you don't know what is missing. So what is it that redemption has provided for us? The Bible tells us very clearly. It said, all things that pertain to life and godliness have been provided for you in redemption. In more specific terms, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 5, verse 12, it said, what is the Lamb who was slain to receive for us? Power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. These are specific packages that have been provided by the sacrifice of Christ. Therefore, they are your right. It means if any one of them is missing in any department of life, you have been robbed. The Bible says there is a thief that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. I see you taking possession of all your rights in the redemption. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What are we saying therefore? We must recognize that restoration is God's will for his people. It is God's will for his people. And beyond that, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of restoration. Everywhere you see the Holy Spirit appear, one of the manifestations he displays is the manifestation of restoration. Joel chapter 2, verse 25 and verse 26, we see in specifics here. He said, and I will restore to you the years that the locals have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. He said in verse 26, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. What is it that triggered all of this? If you read it from verse 21 down to verse 24, you see there, it said, be glad, you children of Zion, and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. And as a result of that, he will give unto you the later rain and the former rain, both of them in the same month. And the rain refers to the outpouring of the Spirit. Because in verse 27 and 28, he said, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. So wherever the Holy Ghost pour, is poured out, there is restoration. It doesn't matter what is missing. It brings about comprehensive restoration. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That is why I know today, by the power of the Holy Ghost, there shall be comprehensive restoration for you. Somebody believe it, say loud amen. I said somebody believe it, say loud amen. One of us shared a testimony. He was dismissed from his place of work on justly 20 years ago in 1997 and began to serve God as God connected him to this commission. And suddenly the Holy Ghost, who is the spirit of rest rest restoration, took over. And he was recalled after 20 years. Uh, you, you and I both know that in most organizations, they have forgotten that you ever were there. After five years, they are forgotten. If you come, they begin to ask you who you are looking for. But after 20 years, he was recalled. Not only that, they calculated his salary 20 years back and all their company benefits 20 years back and gave it to him at once. God turned his losses to savings. And it entered his hand at once by the power of the Holy Ghost. Whatever you may have lost is returning to you at once. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 61, it said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me. And what is the effect of that anointing? Jump to verse 4 and look at what begins to happen. It says there, and they shall build the old ways. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the waste cities. 
the desolations of many generations. That is, God has not forgotten what has been lost. He has a perfect record of it all. He said, the desolation of many generations. Aliens shall stand and they shall, be, they shall feed your flocks. He said, and the sons of aliens shall be your plowmen and vine dressers. He said, and you shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. And you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall you boast yourself for your shame. You shall have double. And for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess their double and everlasting joy shall be unto them by the Holy Ghost. Therefore, today, I see that kind of restoration as described in scriptures coming your way supernaturally. <laughs> So we see that God's will is for us to enjoy restoration and the Holy Ghost himself is the spirit of restoration. Therefore, it is the will of God for us to pursue, for us to overtake and to recover all. Pursue. David came back and discovered Ziegler burned to the ground. Everything they owned disappeared. Family disappeared. Children gone. Property gone. Everything at once. He went to God. Lord, what is your will? What do you want me to do? Should I sit down and take it? Or shall I pursue? And God said, pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them. And without fail, you will recover all. And we see down from verse 19, the Bible says, and David recovered all that the Amalekites took. His wives, his children, everything. Every one thing that they took, David recovered all. And he said, and there was nothing missing whether it was great or small, neither spoil or anything they had taken to them, David recovered all. I don't know what may have been stolen, but today you are recovering all. I said today you are recovering all. Today you are recovering all. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, to command supernatural restoration, we see the following that are required. Number one, you must be born again. You cannot call for restoration without salvation. You must be born again. Romans chapter 8 verse 29 and verse 30. Romans 8, 29 and verse 30. For whom he did foreknow, those he also did predestinate to be conformed into the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren for whom he did predestinate them he called and those he called he justified and those he justified he glorified you must first be born again until you enter into salvation you cannot experience restoration it is restoration that positions you for salvation. Why? The thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I, Jesus, have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And he that has the Son of God has life. So until you have Christ, you don't have the life that enjoys restoration. It begins with salvation. It begins with salvation. Number two, be committed to serving God and the interest of his kingdom. Be committed to serving God and the interest of his kingdom. In 2 Chronicles chapter 15, we see verse 3 down to verse 6, the state of Judah was devastation, vexation everywhere. No one could lift up their head. But when they committed to serve God, God gave them rest round about. That is, he said to them on every side. Verse 12 down to verse 15. So be committed to serving God. Your commitment to serving God positions you for supernatural restoration. Be committed to serving God. Let serving God be your priority. Let pleasing God be your heartbeat. Be committed to serving God. 
Every time you commit yourself to serving God, you position yourself to be restored by God. You position yourself to be restored by God. Commit yourself to serving God. Number three, settle down in the house of God. Settle down in the house of God. Obadiah verse 17, the Bible said, Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. It means that your, your planting in God's house is the secret to you maintaining your possession. The things that belong to you can only be adequately taken when you keep planted in God's house. Second Samuel chapter 7 and verse 10, he said, I will appoint a place for my people. He said, and they will not move anymore. Neither will the sons of wickedness afflict them as before time. I will, I will appoint them a place and they will stay there and they cannot be touched by devourers. So to keep that which belongs to you, to take possession of it, you must of necessity remain planted in God's house. Psalm chapter 132, verse 13 down to verse 16. Psalm 132, verse 13 to 16. The Bible says, For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. He said, This is my rest forever, and here will I dwell, for I have desired it. And what will I do? I will abundantly bless her provision and I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will abundantly bless and I will satisfy her poor with bread. And verse 16, it says there, I will also clothe her place with salvation and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. So we see clearly, hallelujah. We see clearly here that your planting in God's house facilitates your restoration. No matter what you have lost, don't lose God. Because he's our sufficiency. He's our replenishment. He's our source of supply. Once you have a bakery, you can't complain about losing bread. Because the will, bakery will keep producing bread. God is the supply of our blessing. Therefore, staying planted in him and planted in his house is the secret to our restoration. Is somebody hearing what God is saying? When David lost everything, what he did was to run down to God and settle down before the Lord. Lord, what do I do? Because he knew that in God's presence, in God's house, in God's vicinity, lay his restoration. The house of God must remain our place of succor. It must remain our place of succor. There should be no challenge of life that ever moves you out of God's house. No situation of life ever should move you out of God's house because it, is the, it doesn't matter what you have lost. In his presence is where there's restoration. God, someone our father shared the testimony. He said many years ago, his body was under some strain and attack. And he kept telling himself, if only I can get into God's house. If only I can enter into God's presence. If only I can get there. And with all of that in his body, it just kept moving. It seemed like health had been lost, but he knew that the place for it to be restored was in the house of God. He got there into God's presence in that time of fellowship, and then he was told, Brother David, you'll be the one leading prayer. And according to him, their prayer time, you only know when it starts. You can't tell when it's supposed to finish. You just continue. I said, he got there and began to pray. And suddenly, in the presence of God there, because he realized something, he said, I checked the guest list of the house of God. And Satan, your name is not there. Because the guest list is already documented. It's there in the Bible. Upon Mount Zion, the Bible tells us, he said, you have come to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem. He said, when you get there, these are the people you will see, very clearly. He said, innumerable company of angels, general assembly of the church of God. You have come to, this, to the blood of sprinkling. You have come to God, the judge of all. The spirit of just men made perfect. That is the guest list of Zion. 
Satan, your name is not here. I want you to recognize people of God. The culprit behind your losses is not found in God's house. When you are in God's house, you have escaped the realm where he can be permitted. You have entered into the circumference of God's presence. He cannot be found there. He said, and suddenly as he began to pray, strength and vitality restored. He said, by the time he was returning, he had his bones practically adjusting, coming back into order. Why? He has entered into the house of God, the repair shop, the place of restoration. That is why when you come to church, you say, I'm going to service. I'm going to God's workshop. He's going to work on my destiny again. He will adjust the things that are not working. He will remove all the dirty spark plugs and begin to rearrange them. He will cleanse me. He will renew my oil. He will strengthen me. He will rejuvenate me. That is the power of God's presence. And that is why you cannot afford to be outside of God's presence. David cried. <laughs> He said, don't take me away from your presence. Whatever you do, don't, don't let me be away from your presence. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not your spirit from me. The presence of God, as corporately experienced in the house of God, is the secret to your restoration. Finally, number four, engage in a cry of faith for your desired restoration. Engage in a cry of faith. Engage in a cry of faith. Now, in the book of 2 Kings chapter 8, we come across this experience. The Shunammite woman had to leave her country at the instruction of Elisha. By the time she returned, everything she owned was taken away already. And the Bible said that this woman came before the king to cry for her land to cry for her land. And as soon as she arrived, in verse 6, the Bible says, 2 Kings chapter 8 and verse 6, and when the king asked the woman, she told him, so the king appointed unto her a certain officer. What did he say? Restore all that was hers and all the fruit of the field since the day she left, even until now. She went there to cry, and the king responded. Our God is a faithful father. Every one of his children that cries unto him secures his attention. So cry a cry of faith. My father, restore unto me that which is lost. You make it a cry. She went there to cry for her land. And not only did her land get restored, but all the fruit of the land from the day she left was automatically restored unto her. That will be somebody's experience today. I said that will be somebody's experience today. That will be somebody's experience today. In the book of Isaiah chapter 38, verse one to five, Ezekiah's health had seemed to have failed. And then suddenly a word came and said, put your house in order because you are going to depart. <laughs> and Ezekiah did not argue with the prophet, he turned to the wall and he cried unto his God. And among the details of his cry, he said, why should I be deprived of the residue of my years? And the Lord said to Isaiah, go back and tell him, I've heard him. Go back and tell him, I've heard him. And that I've added now 15 more years unto his days. The God of restoration responds to the cry of faith. Today, as you cry in faith, I see restoration coming your way. I said, I see restoration coming your way. Whatever you have lost, no matter how long it may have been, the God of restoration is restoring it today. Lift up your right hand to heaven and give God thanks for his word this morning. Give God thanks for his word this morning. Give him thanks for his word this morning. Lord, we give you thanks. You are worthy of praise. You are worthy of glory. You are worthy of honor. Thank you, mighty God. In the precious name 
of the Lord Jesus, we have prayed. Before we go further this morning, if you are here today and you have not surrendered your life to Jesus, you have not made him the Lord and the Savior of your life, salvation is the starting point to restoration. Wherever you are, you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to become a child of God, you want to have a new, new beginning with Jesus, quickly rise up on your feet right now, wherever you are. You say, I want to be born again. I want to have a real relationship with Jesus. I want to become a child of God. Quickly, rise up on your feet everywhere. Everywhere, rise on your feet right now. Rise on your feet right now. This is your day. People of God, give Jesus a big hand this morning. Quickly rise on your feet right now, wherever you are. Jesus is calling upon you this morning, beckoning on you. Thank you, Jesus. Also, there are those who are here who need to return. Somewhere along the line, you may have been walking with God, but something happened, and whatever the cause of it, you found yourself disconnected, just disassociated. Inside your heart, there is no true, genuine connection to Jesus. This is your opportunity. You can return so that you can be restored. Wherever you are, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus and have a new beginning. Quickly also rise on your feet right now. All over this place, rise on your feet right now. Wherever you are, on your feet very quickly. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you have done that in the first and second call, please make your way to the aisle that is closest to you. Officials, please beckon upon them quickly. Help them make your way to the aisle closest to you. I will pray for you from right there. Quickly make your way to the aisle closest to you and I'll be praying for you from right there. Help them quickly as they move to the aisle. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody. It's worthy of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to the Lamb. Please suspend filling your form for now. Suspend filling your form. Lift up your right hand. And I want you to pray this prayer of faith from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Louder, Lord Jesus. I come to you today as a sinner. I know you died for me. On the third day you rose again. Jesus, come into my life as my Lord and Savior. Take control of me from this day forward. Now I know that I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep your hand lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, today I thank you for these precious ones. You have drawn them by yourself and you have drawn them unto yourself. Lord, I ask that the grace for them to walk with you all the days of their lives come upon each one of them in the name of Jesus. We decree that they will serve you with all of their hearts in the name of Jesus. No turning back in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Congratulations. It's a new day for you. Hallelujah. Please make sure you complete your form, return it to the officials, and then you return to your seat and you'll be contacted concerning the foundation school which you must attend and it will be a blessing to you. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody. Shall we rise on our feet right now and with a loud ovation to Jesus as God's servant, our Father, comes to the altar this morning. Make that hand bigger for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As already said, serving God guarantees automatic restoration. Because you have committed yourself to serving God and the leaders of his kingdom, your restoration is sealed today. No one serving God is permitted to be stranded. No one serving God is permitted to be cheated. No one serving God is permitted to be stagnated. No one serving God is permitted to be frustrated. Therefore, whatever effort the enemy has put in place to frustrate any life here, I command your instant restoration today. In the name of Jesus. 
He's given you and me all things that pertain to life and godliness. And he's saying the same thing he said to David. Pursue, overtake. For that shall surely recover all. Now, whatever area of your life you now have discovered you have been robbed of, your rights in Christ. Now begin to call for that restoration. Begin to call for that restoration right now. Restoration of your health, restoration of your career, restoration of your family. Now begin to call for it. Begin to call for it. We are told that woman cried to Jesus, cried to God, cried to the king. And the king commanded all that belongs to her to be restored. It's your turn for all that belongs to you to be restored. Now call for it. 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 Your destiny is restored. Call for it. Your family is restored. Call for it. Your marital destiny is restored. Call for it. Your career is restored. Your business is restored. Call for it. Rattle kete to taria. Call for it. In Jesus, precious name, we have prayed. And by a prophet, the dignity of Israel was restored. And by pro prophet, her destiny was preserved. Therefore, I speak for to your destiny as a prophet. And I decree the restoration of your glory and your color. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Under this anointing, your total health is declared restored. <laughs> Everyone's spiritual life is restored back to order today. <laughs> Every of your secret tears is turned into public testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a big hand, get seated for a moment. Please be seated. Operation prayer for life enters his last week, but please, Take note of this. Why your prayers are answered and the blessings of God is pouring down on you, it is a lifelong task. So what has God done within the last seven weeks? He has done nothing but initiate you and me into a lifelong of kingdom advancement focused prayers. It is one way we serve God. And serving God entitles you to remain on his payroll. Either reap it, receive it, wages, and one of the ways we reap is from the prayer altar. It's the most effective of all sequels of harvest. It's able to reap the earth in one day and bath a nation at once. So it is your initiation season. So it's not ending this week. Your initiation ceremony ends this week and then you enter into that profession for life. It's a lifelong profession. And I was serving God with prayers and fastings at 84. At 84 daily, Luke 2, 37. So is it your soft spot for remaining on God's payroll and to keep changing levels all the days of your life? Because he said, even unto old age, you shall still bring forth fruits. Prayer is one lifelong platform for every believer to keep serving God profitably. Yes, so, 
May your initiation season be successfully concluded. Amen. And may that become your life tide in the many days of your life. Amen. This is so important. If everybody in this church would pray one hour kingdom focus prayer per day, this revival will be alive forever. So may you be listed in this prayer army. Amen. Until you are tired of blessings, don't, tired of, don't be tired of serving God. Because serving God is the gateway to his blessings. Thou shalt serve and he shall bless. Thou shalt serve and he shall bless. So until you are tired of his blessings, don't be tired of serving him. And prayer is one platform where serving God is for a lifetime. It's for a lifetime. Please take that seriously. It will answer our prayers this week. Yes, our initiation ceremony will be successfully completed. And we are not just praying for souls to be saved for new converts, to be established in the faith. We are praying for members of the church to be turned into enviable testimonies among men. We are praying for breakthroughs for challenged believers so they can be established in the faith and fulfill their destiny in grand style. We're praying for the needs of others so that our needs can also be met. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. Kingdom focused prayer. We are praying for God to turn every member to entities of attraction, thereby multiplying the church continuously. For 10 men shall hold this to this kind of it as a Jew and say, we'll go with you. Now, why are we doing this completely all the time? Because God's grand plan is to turn the kingdoms of this world to the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. Before Jesus comes, the church will be reigning in power. The church will be reigning in glory. All the fountains of life shall be domiciled in the church. And that's where we are going. Jesus is Lord. May you be successfully listed in this prayer army. May the blessings of praying kingdom and Roman prayer be yours for life. May it become an heritage for your children and heritage for your children and children in the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be in Jesus' precious name. Stand to your feet. Now, we have two publications here. I hope the ushers have done it. If they have not, they will do it now. One is calling back home every discouraged winner. So you take one, one copy of this and you look for any winner in the place you live, in your workplace, in your marketplace, and sit down with him to tell him, I have sent you to tell him or her, your breakthrough is just one step more. Don't give up, stay on. If you turn your back on God today, who will help you tomorrow? God is the ultimate source of help that we have. If God can handle your case, nobody else can. So please help me with love and passion. Locate each of those embattled winners, discouraged winners, the ones that are about to throw in the towel, the ones who have thrown in the towel and tell them, Jesus is looking for you to restore you. Because until you return, you cannot be restored. Let's believe God for them. None of them shall be lost. Everyone of them shall make it to the end. They will make it to heaven. And Jesus' name shall be glorified. And number two, prophetic covering is still today. What did I say? May you be a bona fide beneficiary of that. And this prophetic ministry, taking cover under this prophetic canopy, guarantees your security, guarantees your protection, guarantees your beauty, guarantees your color. So take cover. I mean, you see amazing testimonies here. It's all saying to you, you have this opportunity. Take full advantage of it. Anytime you are challenged, cry out, where is the Lord God of my prophet? Call your prophet by name and help us open up. And like Elijah, the river will divide into two and you will go over. Nobody here shall be Come the devil's miss meet anymore. Yeah. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Please get a copy of this for your keep, and you can also get that across to your other friends so they can know Jesus still covers people today. 
The testimony of our rescue is all about prophetic covering. Prophetic covering is real, is genuine, is impregnable. You will never be assaulted again by the enemy. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. Now, you are ready for the communion, lift up your two hands and ask the Lord for exactly what you want. Let it still was now take position. Ask the Lord what you desire of him. Remember the communion empowers us, to, empowers us to live like Christ. So whatever is not like Christ in your life must be restored today. Must be restored today. There is no sickness in Christ. There is no disease in Christ. There is no assault in Christ. Whatever is unlike Christ in your life must be restored today. Must be restored today. No oppression in Christ. Whatever is unlike Christ must be restored in your life today. Le Korea le Sasalo. Ebra balo kare tanteko. Eya karo ta sizareto. Now pray. Now pray. Now pray. Now pray and take it. Now pray and take it. Jesus alo kapo. Elo prade kalos. La barako teko. Eya lato sandege. Thank you Jesus. Blessed be your name. Jesus, precious name, we are praying. Amen. This table is declared today as the flesh and the blood of Jesus. Amen. And I decree that by the mercy of the word you've had and the communion table, this day is declared your day of restoration. Amen. Your glory and your color is declared restored today. <laughs> By the mercy of this communion table, your health is declared totally restored. <laughs> Every terminal disease in anyone's life is terminated today. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. <laughs> The thief has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but Jesus has come to restore all the things that the thief has stolen. Therefore, I decree full restoration of everything anyone may have lost to the devil today. In Jesus' precious name. And so shall it be. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please be seated as we serve the table of the Lord right away. Glory to God. Amen. Why the choir ministers to the Lord approach this table with faith. Return from this table making declarations of your restoration and do that with all intent and purpose. You are returning with your testimony today. Broken family is restored today. Every scattered children, they are restored today. Whatever the enemy has scattered in your life is restored back today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything about you that is unlike Christ is fully restored today. Now, quiet.
and give the Lord a big, big clap offering. Amen. Lift up your two hands and give God thanks one more time. Give him thanks one more time. Give him thanks for your restoration today. The week is declared your week of restoration testimony. Give him thanks and praise. Something has turned loose in your life. God has recovered all that you have lost to the enemy. It's a brand new day for you. Thank you, Jesus. And blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Please be reminded next Sunday is our covenant day of fruitfulness. Amen. And it shall mark the end of dry seasons in your life. Everyone called barren man or woman shall become fruitful. Every barren destiny shall flourish again. Barren business and career shall flourish again. So get ready. It's a covenant day of all unfruitfulness. And get everybody down here to be partakers of this awesome feast of the word of life in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, we are expected to have two, two copies of these. I use them. Do you have copies? Okay, please do and take advantage of it now. We close this morning from 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and we stand up to read it. Amen. Verse 8 and to 12. For we will not have, we will not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia that we were pressed out of measure above strength in so much that we despair the even of life. But we are the centers of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raises the dead. Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us? Verse 11, he said, ye also happen together by prayers for us, that for the gift upon us by means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. And verse 12, for our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you all. That has been our testimony over the years. And the last attack on our flight is the same testimony. God has always delivered and we always deliver. Now, wait a minute. Not one member of this church forever shall be a victim of air crash. And I speak for this words as God's prophet. Not one member of this family forever, worldwide, shall be a victim of air crash. <laughs> we get details during the Thanksgiving service, uh, the last Sunday of the month, of how God did what he did, as he always does as he always does. Lift up your two hands, saying, Now, the week is declared your restoration testimony week. The businesses you have lost shall be recovered this week. Your career that is under trial shall triumph this week. Concerning your head, you will receive the news that has been restored. And so shall it be. Remember next Sunday is our special monthly anointing service, so remember to come along with your 
bottles of anointing oil. It shall be an awesome time in his presence. Now together let's share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. My case is different. And as a covenant child, what affects others is not permitted to affect God. Congratulations.